Hello, hello, everybody. It's 12.51 p.m. Central Time on the 27th of September 2021. It's Monday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. Guys, just want to show you what's going on here. We were watching all last night at La Palma as the side of the volcano broke open. I'm not going to pull the video on that. You guys can go look it up. We watched it all last night. Side of the volcano broke open at a side vent, drained out a lot of magma. This has actually reduced the activity up at the peak or coming out of the crater slightly. We're now getting new blasts coming out again. It was quiet throughout a good part of the day, according to Bushcraft Bear, a guy over there doing updates from La Palma. And that's just where we are right now with the volcano. I'm going to be doing a full update as new 6.0 range energy has now come into Europe. And let me show you what we're talking about here. Get a display capture turned on. Last night, a new 6 struck right here at Crete. And this is actually an increase in energy arriving into Europe. And it's coming out of Asia, which two days ago, if you managed to catch one of my live updates, there was a line of quakes marked in red and pink here that went across Eastern Asia, the whole continent, going all the way up into Siberia, all the way back down to Indonesia. This line of quakes struck across north to south. Then, last night, and going into this morning, this took place. A line of quakes going across the Mideast at the pinnacle bend of the plate at Afghanistan. Now, I'd like to show this all to you, actually, on the USGS plate boundary map, where it's going to make a little sense to some viewers. The red lines are the boundaries between plates. And the previous day... We saw a line of quakes go between boundaries across Asia, going from Myanmar and Indonesia all the way up to Siberia. Now the energy transferred over here to the west, to the pinnacle bend of the plate at Afghanistan. It's gone over to the west even further and struck with a combined total of everything. So all the fives added up to a new six. Hold on one second, guys. I've got a sneeze coming. I'm live, and eh, within a few minutes, we're going to get a sneeze. Sorry, guys, it is allergy season for me, and it's just going to be like that when I do my updates. Okay, so here we are again. We're looking at 6.0 that struck last night and or into this morning Europe time. And this is on the plate boundary at Crete. So look at the red line here. Look where it goes. It goes up into Italy and goes over to the west, over to Gibraltar, south of Spain, north of Morocco. Additionally, we have arrows on the map here that go up across Central Europe and Eastern Europe. Now the location of the six has struck in Central Greece, Central South Greece down at Crete. So this to me says it should split three ways. We should see the energy most likely, hopefully, go up around Romania and Ukraine to Poland and beyond up to my people up in Holland and even to the North Sea. We should also see a round of earthquakes go right up the middle, smack dab right into the middle of Central Europe at Croatia, and we should see a line of quakes go up across Italy, back down across the Pyrenees. The Pyrenees are the mountain range right there at the Spain-France border region right here. Go down across the Pyrenees and down to Gibraltar. Now from that point, let's go back to the USGS map. We want it to go over to the west, due west, out to the Azores. That's the normal path the energy takes normally. But last month, this all broke apart right here. Swarm after swarm of quake going up into noteworthy sized earthquakes in the mid to upper five range. And that misdirected the flow down to the Canaries, which led us to have the magma chamber come under pressure. And that leads us to what's going on over at the Canary Islands right now. It's blowing right now again. But take a look at this. The new development in the last day to day and a half, a series of earthquakes has now started to break out a swarm, if you will at Gibraltar again. So this hit last night. It was somewhat quiet over here at Gibraltar with just a few small earthquakes. Now we have a whole stack of them. I call that a swarm. And last night, a new swarm broke out at the Canary Islands out here at La Palma. You don't see it now because it's over 50 earthquakes old. The feed we're using for the Europeans is 50 earthquakes. So, and I don't have any say in that. That's just what they provide. So a new swarm at Gibraltar means energy is now breaking at Gibraltar. No dub, and we know where the energy came from. 
came from all the way over here and it's transferred across and the cumulative total of all the energy here piled up there. Think of this like a wave traveling across. It gets stuck at the W shape bend in the plate here, but it's not going to stop completely. It should break three ways across Europe, one out to the west, one up to the north, one up to the east. And that's going to reduce the magnitudes at each location. So take this six and break it apart three ways, basically. And what we get is like a 5.5's worth of energy going up this way, a 5.5's worth of energy going smack in the middle of Europe, and a 5.5's worth of energy going out all the way over to Gibraltar and hopefully go due west out to the Azores. But with this going now, I'm going to say it, it's probably going to redirect it back down to the Canaries, back down to the west-southwest down here to the magma chambers down here on the west-southwest side. West-southwest side of what? Of the red line, the plate boundary. So energy is flowing from here. It's trying to go out to here the way it normally goes. And right in the middle, it gets misdirected at this point down to the magma chambers where it's breaking and pushing out and causing major activity. So what is breaking and pushing out? You know, I've been talking about this, but there's something transferring or going across areas. It's a standing wave of some kind. I think very low frequency, VLF. But just imagine it like this. A push coming in from down here and going down to this end of the tank. When it gets to this end of the tank, closest to us, it reflects back into itself. And the amplitude increases. It's basically a feedback loop. Like what happens in audio systems when sound gets picked up in a microphone, goes back through, comes back out, picked back up, goes back through, comes back out, increases the sound, the, the actual volume. Well, in this case, the amplitude or the power behind the wave, magnitude, you could think of it like that, magnitude increases. And so the more we pump in to the tank, the bigger the wave gets. And notice the waves are all about the same size, aren't they? As you pump more energy in, it distributes across the tank. And that really matters. So why does that matter? We'll get back to the earthquakes that are spreading across Mother Nature's tank. And the combined total of the wave that was generated yesterday was focused in on the center of the tank. Let me show you the tank. The red lines here. So think of it like this. The wave starts over here and it travels across. Once it gets to this pinnacle point, path of least resistance, it goes down and around. And it pulled up there with a bunch of quakes. And now the combined total has reached over so far to Greece. It's going to go out to the west. The only question is, is it going to the Azores or the Canaries? Or, uh, well, uh, my hope is now, hoping in science though, come on, it's like superstitious almost to hope in something in science. But we want to see this break three ways across Europe. We want to see smaller earthquakes break out, even if they're 5.5s as opposed to 6s. If this 6, the energy, were to maintain its momentum and just go straight over here, then it would be a huge increase over here alone. So when you break it apart three ways, it's less, right? It goes across the whole mass as opposed to a single point. And that's what we want to see. Go across the whole mass as opposed to just over to Gibraltar and the Canaries. But when I see the Canaries starts to blow again, let's just see what we got going on here. Oh, wait. Did the feed die? The feed is dead. La Palma feed is now dead. Let's hit refresh and just see what we've got. You know, it's all CNN and everybody else getting in on the mix, but I'm just wanting to see it live. Yeah, it stopped. They've cut the feed. All right, well, there's a new push coming in, and we absolutely need to pay attention now because with the blasts increasing, and they are, they're going back up from where they were last night, which was they dropped off, according to Bushcraft Bear. Who is there? He said it was quiet. And the lava flow, he said, had stopped. But now it's starting to pick back up. And the new wave, let's get back over to the wave tank. The new wave is incoming now. And what do you think happens when a standing wave, thousands thousands of miles long, I almost said tens of thousands, but thousands of miles long, comes into a magma chamber. These peaks come hammering in to a magma chamber. What do you think happens? Well, it charges the magma chamber. And that's what causes our increases to take place as seismic travels across an area. So seismic will travel across an area and excite volcanoes along the way. So where does that wave come from? This is the ultimate answer right here. The deep earthquakes are where the wave is generated. The deep earthquakes are happening down below the plates. 
in the magma. And what I think is going on there gets back to the start of this video, which is across thousands of miles, the wave focuses in on itself. And it can't compress down into the fluid of the magma much. So then it hammers up into the underside of the plate, the combined total of however many deep earthquakes there are, into a standing wave that's huge down below the actual plates. And then you get a quote-unquote earthquake down in the asthenosphere, which is semi-melted. How can that happen? How can something semi-melted, plasticky, break? Well, plastic can break, but I would think first the wave is hammering in on the underside of it. And when that wave is hammering in from all the deep quakes, it then comes up, out, and away from where the deep earthquakes are taking place. So let me just quickly refresh that. Deep earthquakes hammer in on the underside of the plate. That wave spreads up, out, and away in the tank. And the tank is, or the tanks are, the red lines, the plate boundaries that contain the wave that's coming up from below the plate. So from below the plate, coming up, and it hits these cracks in the plate. These red lines, they go all the way through the plate from the surface all the way down to the underside where the two plates meet up together. A seam, if you will. Even if it's only a millimeter or less, it's still a seam. And that's a weak point in the plate. As opposed to brute force coming up through the center of the plate, it goes out to the edges. Just like you're lifting on something. Okay? So the deep quakes are raised high off the globe so we can see them easily and you can see where they are. And spreading out from the deep quakes, that's where all our energy spreads out. And look, it's like a path going right over to our six over in Europe. Let's trace that path. Starting over here, deep quakes and deep quakes up at Japan. And the path of quakes goes out over and we've reached over to Greece. On the USGS map, it doesn't really show it. We're looking at 24 hours on that USGS map. Here's 48 hours, so it really shows it two days time. It's reached over this far and is now swarming at Gibraltar. Now let's go the other direction. Oh, oh, Aziz! Azay! Azay! Guys, time to put the prawns back on the barbie. That's not an earthquake. That's an earthquake. There it is, guys. How many crocodile Dundee jokes can I crack, man? I'm a damn Yankee. Get out my buoy knife. But now, serious, new round of energy coming in from the Northwest, right on our arrow. I told you guys last week, we got to watch out for any incoming energy into the Australian plate that goes this way, because it goes in a trajectory down to the east by southeast, tends to strike down next to Adelaide, Kangaroo Island, Melbourne, and look what just happened down in Melbourne. The largest earthquake, I think, in Melbourne's history, if not in Melbourne's history, Certainly in the last several decades, long enough that I wouldn't even know how far back to look, 6.0 struck down here on the edge of the Australian plate. But I told you, energy comes from up here, travels down here. So a new push is coming in now. And we know there's a new push going on. Take a look up to the north, past several days worth of quakes. The whole region inundated with activity going up to Japan, over to the west, basically the whole plate boundary. This is the Indo-Australian plate here, India, Australia, and the line of quakes going around pretty much the whole north side of it. And when one side of a whole plate moves, the other side of the plate compensates, guys. And that's what's going on down on the south side, down near Antarctica. Antarctica, the line of earthquakes down here between the two, between it. Basically, the Indo-Australian plate and Antarctica, it's aligned with quakes previously. So now, again, this is just seven days worth of quakes now. We're looking at a week. And it's the whole region spreading across to Asia where that line of quakes that I talked about a day ago has now, cumulative total, gone over to Asia. And this is just half the planet. We have to go to the other side because there's a lot going on in the United States. There's a lot going on in Central and South America and Alaska. So a six struck a day ago, well, now two days ago, 48 hours ago, struck here up in the Aleutian Island chain at Adak, Alaska. Now, a Adak, of all the places, there's something at Adak, Alaska. The X-Band radar ship. <laughs> How do I know about this? Oh, my research into harp. Radar ship. There it is. 
The sea-based X-band radar. Look at the picture of this damn thing. Look at that. Look at the dome, and it's got several other domes. This thing's like 300 feet tall. Okay, these are like oil derricks that float. So vessel length, 389 feet long. Height, 279 feet tall to the top of the radome. That's one giant X-band radar that's capable of doing millions of scans per second. This is the military now. But it's, you know, also used for missile defense agency. Uh, we, you know, uh, what, what are we using? We're using it just to track the missiles. We don't use it to shoot it down. Uh, that would be a conspiracy. Uh, we, we don't have that kind of technology, Dutch. Okay. Well, what about very low frequency inducing earthquakes? What about high frequency? Can high frequency and microwaves induce earthquakes? Yes. Certainly it can. Now, how? Oh, well, that ship with its giant dome will beam up into the ionosphere at an angle. Go all the way up into space, a missile defense. And they can beam that and target it into a few kilometer wide area, if small, if not smaller. Now, when you target a beam, a very high power, going up through the upper ionosphere, when that radio wave is going across the ionosphere, think of your feet going across a carpet on a dry day. And you, what happens? Well, you scuff your feet across a carpet and you pick up an electric charge. You actually strip free electrons from the carpet and bring it up into your body and store it like a battery or a capacitor. And then you go touch something, metal usually, or something that's grounded, usually has moisture in it, and zap out the energy comes out of your body and you see a little lightning bolt connect out of your finger. And it goes over to that and it goes down to ground. Okay. Well, the radio wave scuffs its feet across the carpet of the upper atmosphere. And the electric charge, instead of building in your body, builds in a pocket or an area that they're hitting with the radio wave. And it's insulated up at those layers. Each layer of the atmosphere is actually coupled. If you understand electricity at all, you understand that that means it flows like a wire. And long story short, you shoot a beam up into the upper ionosphere and it creates electron cascade. Scuffing your feet across the carpet builds up that charge. That turns into what's called air glow or plasma. And you might be familiar with something called the Northern Lights. The Northern Lights, of course, is glowing air glow from the sun, of course. Charged particles scuffing their feet across the atmosphere up in space. And the sun's charged particles doing the same thing that radio waves do. And long story on that is that this can precipitate like a rainstorm and the electrons cascade down to the Earth, electrically speaking, and get caught up in the electric, electromagnetic field lines of the Earth and taken down to the core of the Earth. So you get a big ship like that with millions, if not tens of millions, of watts of power behind it, and you target an area up in the atmosphere, that can then create the electrons that go down to ground, and when the electrons go down to ground, <laughs> earthquake. And it's happened so many times in the past. Of course, they called it a conspiracy theory. Yeah, who is they, right? Well, we don't even listen to those people anymore. I wrote Freedom of Information Access request to the U.S. Naval Research Laboratories, USNRL. They responded, sent me a bunch of stuff. Anyway, all right, so let's talk about it. Deep quakes spreading out. We have a six up here right next to the X-band radar ADAC Alaska docking location. You also have a spread of quakes going out over towards Europe that's exciting things over at the Canaries or over at Gibraltar. We're looking for this to go down either to the Canaries or over to the Azores. We want it to go to the Azores. Aussies moving again. New push coming in from the north. And now let's jump over to the United States, Central America, and South America. So two days, three days ago, the same sized earthquake struck both Central and South America in the same day. Same 24-hour to 48-hour time period. A 6.4 struck down at Chile, and a 6.5 struck on the coast of Nicaragua and Central America. Surrounding it, a bunch of fives. And the two same-sized quakes in the same day, they are definitely related to each other. It's the whole East Pacific from right here at the plate boundary in Central America, down here to the middle of the plate boundary at Ar Argentina and Chile. 6.4 and 6.5, again, just call them two 6.4s or two 6.5s. 
the whole east side of the central and southern Pacific shifted or compensated. But you got to remember, it also happened up here. That six that I was just talking about at Adak, Alaska, where the X-band ship is, and the previous six over here in the middle of the plate boundary at the Kuril Islands. Let's show those to you. So one side of the plate moves with two sixes, 6.1 and a 6.0. And the other side of the plate moves, 6.4 and a 6.5. So it's a half magnitude larger on one side of the plate than it is on the other. But I think it's pretty obvious. Both sides of the plate are shifting, northwest and southeast. Right? I mean, that's just what we see. I mean, that's what's going on. Now, going from those points, where those two sixes struck, let me get them back on the screen here, a few days ago. Again, they're marked in red. This is what's happened since those. A spread of quakes went out and over to the east in both directions. Down south of South America, it went right down to where we have what we call our travels underneath point, where the wave goes down and around the south tip of South America and strikes down at the tip down at the South Sandwich Islands. Let me show you. It comes in this way, down the stair step fracture zone, goes down and around and underneath, and goes down to the southeast tip down here at South Sandwich. Same time, it goes up and around this way, up on the north side. And you'll notice these are two of the same shapes. They're like flowing molasses going around South America. I'm going to show you the Earth in a way you never really look at it. We're going to turn it on its side axis. This way. Okay. Now, this might... Oh, by the way, Google Earth is working today, by the way. I, I don't know what changed. But look around South America on the north side and on the south side. And what you're going to see is two flowing over points where the Pacific Plate connects into down here to the south, Antarctica, and up here to the north, Laurentia, North America. But it flows around it like molasses. Now, this is about 20,000 feet higher, this portion here, this peninsula, if you will, of the plate, the flow over point, 20,000 feet higher here than it is down here. This is a 20,000 foot drop off. I think of this like a landslide flowing over. Now on this side, guess what? Same thing, guys, the Caribbean. This is a 20,000 foot drop off. This is 20,000 feet higher than this is right here. And look at the shape of the volcanoes. Do you see that? It's making like a crescent shape across the whole Caribbean. Did I say Mediterranean? The whole Caribbean. And down here at the South Sandwich, it's the same size and the same shape and everything. So looking at it at a greater picture, the plate is flowing around South America. And the earthquakes, well, let me get back you back over to the plate boundary map. The earthquakes are going around South America in that same trajectory. And you can trace the stair-step fracture zones back over to here where the deep earthquakes are hammering up on the opposite side of the plate all the way over here. And it spreads across following our fracture zones, which you can see in the plate here, making a crescent shape down here and going across this way. That's why I have two arrows there. And earthquakes came across this way this past week. As a matter of fact, let me get them on the feet here. Boom. Right on our arrow. So, again, when I see a flow coming across and then it hits and it goes around, and down, that's the normal expected path. That's why the arrows are on here. The arrows have been on here for eight and a half years now. Okay, I'm drinking a smoothie the Duchess made me, by the way, guys. Okay, United States, you ready? We've got a lot to talk about. We do. There's a lot going on. It looks small, and it is somewhat. It's in the four range. But the flow is going all the way across the North American Craton. Now, I'm going to be mentioning the Craton in the rest of this update. Craton for North America and Craton for the rest, Cratons for the rest of the planet. All a Craton is, it's a geologist word, guys. They have to make it complex and hard. It comes from the Greek word, Kratos. It's like the movie 300, right? You're, you're Kratos. Uh, okay. It comes from Greek, but it just means solid or the more stable portion or the center portion of the plate is the center of the craton. And then you have the deformed edge of the craton, which is marked in purple here. And then you have the coastal plain, the accretionary belt. Again, the outside edge of it, basically. So earthquakes go around the edge of the craton. Instead of just right across the plate, it follows the edges of the craton in a path of least resistance around it. This is one of my biggest discoveries in the last 10 years. 
professionals. I showed it to them. They said it was cha- first. They said I was faking the earthquakes <laughs> somehow. Like somehow I was faking the quakes on the USGS feed. I'm like, no, you can go pull the feeds and match them yourself if you need to. And then they're like, well, it's just chance or coincidence. One earthquake can't cause the other Dutch since. And I said, I- I'm not saying one earthquake is causing the other. I'm saying there's a wave that's traveling across the whole plate, and that's causing the quakes. This is the force that causes the earthquakes. And this wave, as it travels across the t- tank, in this case it's the North American Craton tank, drops off the same size quakes pretty much all the way along the way, just like in any other part of the planet. But it's a smaller amount since we're dealing with less energy here right now. So look coming in from the Northwest. Even a kid could do this. It's a case of connect the dots coming out of Montana and going down into Wyoming, down into Yellowstone. It goes right across the Craton seam, goes right across Yellowstone. That's where the supervolcano formed. Now it's pointing like an arrow. That's again, why we have arrows on the map here. I noticed this years ago. The earthquakes were pointing like arrows in certain directions and going down to Texas and right at the border of Mexico. These are all pumping operations in Texas. Oil and gas. Same within Oklahoma. Every single one is an oil and gas pumping operation. But I want you to make note of the magnitudes because we're dealing with threes. 3.3, 3.0, 2.9. I'll pull the coordinates. We'll go look at it on Google Earth and show you what's in Texas. Again, everybody knows about Texas and oil. But when you see how many drill points are there, I think you're going to understand why it's striking there. It's pretty excessive what I'm getting ready to show you. So here are our storage ponds where they collect water. They will collect fresh water. They'll take the water, put it over to tanks. In the tanks, toxic chemicals. They'll mix them, shoot it down into the ground to break apart the shale, leave the nasties in the ground, and then the oil and gas comes up. So you see how many little pads there are here. There's several hundred right here in this just little screenshot. But we get over here. We start getting into what I would call excessive overdrive just millions and i'm not exaggerating this red dot here is a hot spot from flaming there but millions of drill points here's a town okay and you you see what's around town and whole texas counties have been done this way now think of each one of these drill points and this is just a small amount guys again look at every texas county and every little white pad on the ground is an oil well. Those are not houses. Now, I'm not against oil and gas. I'm not. I drive a Hummer H3. (laughs) But I am going to tell you, when you drill the edge of the Craton, it's going to weaken it. And if you get a push coming across it, Mother Nature, this wave, is going to go to the weak points, just like it goes to a volcano or a geothermal drill point. I'm not picking on oil and gas any more than I'm picking on geothermal steam. There are weak points in the plate. Am I picking on volcanoes? Now let's go over to the east. We have rare east coast earthquake activity, but it's the same exact size as what struck over in Texas. Not a coincidence. The wave is maintaining itself all the way across the plate. 3.1. Let's go look it up. I do recall, I think we've been here before, several years ago, back in 2011 and 2012, So basically, 10 years ago. And they don't have this listed as an explosion. They have it listed as an actual earthquake. So we can rule out quarry blast. It's down at 6 kilometer depth. There's phosphate mines here. Phosphates. At the surface, no less. Where they just scrape the surface. And there's phosphorus. I'm not saying it's here in this subdivision, guys. Saying around this. So let's just back this out. Somerville, South Carolina. Oh, wait. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Guys, anytime we start getting in next to the military and bunkers, anytime I see... Okay, let's just put it this way. You You see the rail lines that are here? And you see the bunkers? Do you know what they have in these bunkers? military stuff and they pull the trains up to here and unload or reload or whatever 
This is the Naval Nuclear Power Training Command Center. Ah, uh, no big deal. Naval Weapons Station Joint Base, Joint Base Charleston. Nah, no big deal. This is how I get in trouble, guys. You know the Department of Defense has responded to my videos before. Last year, last year I caught the directed energy weapons coming out of space causing fires over in California. Made a video, told all my viewers to send it to the Department of Defense in case they didn't know. DOD responded that week. Three days later, four days later, the director of the DOD came out and gave us a speech referencing fires at a distance caused by killer satellites in space using directed energy weapons. Three days after I found the video and told it to send, send it to the Department of Defense. They responded. And so here we are now and We've got ourselves an earthquake right next to the Nuclear Defense Training Center. Gotta point it out, it's on the edge of the Craton. And I have to point out, again, one more time, the relation between radio waves and earthquakes. ADAC Alaska and the X-band radar ship. How could that have anything to do with nuclear power? Well, electron cascade. The same principle that a buildup of electrons can cause earthquakes, whether it's induced by radio waves or nuclear material, or a combination of the two. Another example of that we see is the Hartford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility up here in Washington that gets hit with earthquakes all the time, even the tunnel collapsed there after the earthquake hit there last time. Released all that uranium powder out into the atmosphere. Okay, well, you know, again, when we see earthquakes next to it, that's because of electron cascade. A buildup of electrons that causes earthquakes that goes down into the plate. Now, the rest of the quakes take a step down from threes to twos. And we get up here to the coast of Maine. Ah, the coast of Maine. And I'm not talking about some kind of organic soil. South Portland, Maine. Maybe this is where they're getting the organic soil. I don't know. A bunch of hippies up there told me about it. I, I just heard about it. I don't know. Where are we? Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Now, guys, I do recall here at a place called Harpswell, all of this right on here is the remnant of an ancient super volcanic caldera right along the coast of Maine. And it goes up along the coast here up to this, this feature right here. The ha Oh, my gosh. Guys, we have a hot spot. A hotspot detected in this. Now, I'm going to show you Google Earth place mark for this. Mount Pleasant Caldera is a large eroded late Devonian volcanic caldera complex located in the northern Appalachian Mountains of southwestern New Brunswick, Canada. It's one of the few noticeable pre-Cenozoic calderas. Crustal thinning at the location. Let me back it out and show it to you again. This thing. This is a caldera. Here's the main New Brunswick border. That's the caldera for one of them. Down here along the coast... I would have to go do a search, but I already tried a search earlier this week, and I couldn't find anything. Coast of Maine volcanism. Now, I'm just going to do an image search and just see if it brings it up. It brought up a lot of topography shots. Yeah, I'm looking for a map or something. Here's one. Okay, Maine's volcanoes. Just I, I, I don't know which location this is, but this is, again, in Maine. Uh, I really want to find the map, but it's going to take me probably, I don't know, it'll take me a little digging and research to find the actual volcanoes from the USGS. Mm -mm -mm. Man, you wish it would just come up easily. I, this is the third search I've done, and I'm getting jack squat coming up. And there was this was the topic of so many mainstream news articles. So, I mean, Maine's coast has at least four volcanoes. Here's a post from 2019. It's not coming up at all with its pictures. Yeah, Maine's volcanoes, yes, Maine, were the world's biggest. Maine has super volcanoes. Wait, Maine has volcanoes? Yes, and their eruptions could have been amongst the biggest, over, biggest ever on Earth. So, 420 million years ago, a series of super eruptions dropped thick piles of ash and lava fragments along the proto-east coast. There are at least four volcanoes spread out along 100 miles of Maine's coast. The huge volcanic rock piles are consistent with caldera-forming eruptions. 
Notice how they don't give us any pictures. That's so annoying. Anyway, I'm a pictures kind of guy. And, oh look, we have a bunch of hotspots detected by the weather satellite electromagnetic disturbances that are picked up. They read them like fires right next to it. So starting here at Harpswell, I'm 100% positive it starts at Harpswell. And it goes for 100-something miles up here to Acadia National Park. Super volcanoes from a long time ago. And that's where our earthquake is. It's related. It's a previous weak point on the edge of the craton that's predisposed to be hit as energy is flowing across the craton. It's the same size quake that struck down in Virginia. 2.1 to 2.5. And if you go look up this earthquake in Virginia, well, uh, let's go do it. Man, I just get in trouble all the time because this is going to get me in more trouble. Step on everybody's toes. The Department of Energy, DOE, oh man, when I found all that about the nuclear back in 2011, you have to understand, I drove across the country taking radiation readings back in 2011 when the Environmental Protection Agency turned off their radiological monitoring stations after Fukushima blew over in Japan. And I had to get Geiger counters and drive across the country. I drove from the East Coast over in North Carolina all the way over to Washington State on the West Coast. Went up to Forks, Washington. But now, here, our quakes are striking at Salem, but there's something where the quakes are. Do you see these? These are high-voltage transmission lines. And there's multiples. They actually make a Y juncture right here. And another set goes up this way. Now, we are sandwiched between four sets and two sets. Six total sets. Oh, wait. Actually, there's more. Hold on. Six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine sets of high-voltage power lines that come together here. Now, everything I told you about radio waves, about the scuffing your feet across the carpet of the atmosphere, the same thing happens down below these locations, but they, it's also next to a quarry. Uh, I know, I know. People are going to see this and be like, Dutch, it must be at the quarry. No. This is down seven kilometers down into the earth, the earthquake. So um, th that would be the deepest mine on the planet. So it's not at the quarry. The quarry is just happens to be a weak point that's already there on the edge of the craton. Take a look at the craton again, guys. I'm going to turn all the borders and labels off, all the everything off, and just take a look at it. Well, almost all the everything. There we are. So the craton is a wavy shape that goes down and makes a U-shaped bend down through the south and goes back up into the New Madrid seismic zone here in Missouri. Here's St. Louis as a point of reference, and we're just south of it. Here's the N-shaped bend of the New Madrid. We can trace that back over across Arkansas, and it makes a bend down through Texas. Here's Dallas. It makes a bend down through the center of Dallas, makes a U-shaped bend down through south Texas, and goes back up here into New Mexico. This is Colorado right here. Man, I really had to learn all my states. I can do it without I can do it without state lines, guys. Oh man. If only I could have had this knowledge when I was in school. Now oh, what you'll do to fight trolls and prove your case. You'll memorize every state line across the entire freaking country. All right. Let's go out to the West Coast. So recapping for the US. A line of quakes coming in from the northwest, following the Craton, going right across the supervolcano up at Yellowstone going down across Utah, and then pooling up at Texas. Threes striking, pooling up, down in Texas at the oil pumping operations. Going across Oklahoma's oil pumping operations, which I didn't even show you, but there's 500,000 there. Then going up here into the New Madrid seismic zone. These are the ones I haven't looked up yet. <laughs> there's a reason I haven't looked this one up yet. Oh, man. Well, I'm already in trouble with the military today, so let's just go over and take another look. So we got the X, oh, look at this coordinate, 89.666 West. Oh, yeah, I can't go wrong there. Oh, Dutch. Oh, Dutch, what are you doing? Nothing, man, nothing. I ain't worried about no stinking numbers. What do you think I am, some kind of weirdo? Yeah, you do? Okay, well, I am a weirdo. We're at the Scott Air Force Base. This is the bomber wing and transport wing. Now, they did something really weird here. They've got the Air Force Base. And then they built an international airport right next to it and don't use it. 
the, I mean, they, they are trying to get people to use it or something. There's one plane there, like two planes or whatever. Uh, they built this international airport, and then they connected the runways across to Scott Air Force Base for some reason. Anyway, we're right next to the Air Force Base. Meh. Yeah, just like we're right down next to the nuclear training facility and right next to the X-Band radar facility up there in Alaska. Yeah, it's all just chance of coincidence. No big deal. So, no earthquakes in Oregon. What? Hold on. Let's look at the 0.0s and greater. There's one earthquake reported in Oregon in the past two days. Let's go look it up and see what's going on. Malala, Oregon. Now, I do think I've got some viewers that are up here at Malala, actually. But there's something else here just to the east. Let me show you. So one lone quake. One lone quake. Let me turn on my place marks. What we're actually on the edge of is a giant volcanic field called the Boring Lava Field. The Boring Lava Volcanic Field, underlying part of the city of Portland, Oregon, and neighboring areas to the east across the Columbia River and Washington even, was active from the Pliocene to about the mid-Pleistocene a long time ago. Now there's something else going on here. A bunch of hotspots detected by the weather satellite electromagnetic disturbances right below where the earthquakes are. So electromagnetic disturbances coming up out of the plate, picked up by the weather satellite, and we're on the edge of a volcanic field. Same reason that Yellowstone's getting hit is the same reason that this volcanic field's being hit. There's a push coming in from off the west coast. And there's a line of quakes coming out from it, and we can determine what to look for next. So everybody listen up. This is a day and a half's worth of quakes going down into California, for instance. And what I've noticed in the past couple days, we have a number of earthquake increase. We call that a frequency increase. So think of a drum and you are got a snare drum, and you're just tapping it, and then you increase it to a full-blown rolling drum. I can't even do it, but you know, professional drummer doing that very fast snare drum roll. That's what we're doing now. All these stacks of earthquakes are noticeable swarms. This is not even 48 hours worth of earthquakes, and it makes a definitive line coming out of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone up here with threes, 2.9, 3.0, 3.6, and going down across the Bay Area, quite literally following the Hayward Fault, going into the creeping section of the San Andreas, which is east of Monterey Bay, right here. But then we get down right to here, and we kind of putter out on the San Andreas. We jump over into the valley with a near 3, 2.7. And what's there in the valley? Well, I'm going to show you in a second. There's a reason we jump off the San Andreas, guys. So we're diverted like a flowing river, and when we get down here... Man, wait till you see what's here. Avenal, California. You're, you're not going to believe it. If you're a new viewer, you're just going to be like, what? They did what? That's what I said. I, I couldn't believe it. I said, man, somebody had to know something. So right here, we go over to thousands, well, even tens of thousands of oil wells where they drilled right along the San Andreas. This is, this line right here is the San Andreas. Creeping section, too. And right here is Colinga. It gets its name from the coal from the railroad. From it's They're not doing mining there. It's just they used to drop off coal for trains to pick up or something. But the oil here, tens of thousands of wells, and we come down the San Andreas. We jump right over to the drill points. It's like a perforation along something. So if you've got a crack in something and you want to divert the flow from the crack, well, you're going to perforate it. Think of like a perforated cardboard box and how it makes it easier to bend. So that's why we're jumping off the San Andreas. And that's why the largest of the bunch is going just over to the east. These are parallel to each other. Stops there. But then once we get back down to the southeast tip of the valley, we pick back up in a diagonal line this way. Now remember that diagonal line thing that I'm talking about here. Diagonal line northwest to southeast. Across the whole coast of California, it's unmistakable. Again, the kids could connect the dots game down the coast, and that's the San Andreas, basically. But what if I told you that all of the lines of quakes are doing that? We already talked about up here. It's going northwest to southeast along the edge of the craton down into Yellowstone, where Yellowstone is swarming. We have a line of quakes, if you have to zoom in on it to see it, but across Idaho, it's doing the same thing. 
northwest to southeast, this cluster of quakes in Idaho is above the deepest part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone. Yellowstone comes up to the surface over here where the stack is, over in Wyoming, but the magma chamber is 11 Grand Canyons in size. It goes down below all of Idaho and over into Oregon. So the center of the magma chamber, these earthquakes in Idaho are right above it. So we got a northwest to southeast line coming across Montana. We got a northwest to southeast line coming across Idaho. Going across California, same thing, northwest to southeast line. And then in the valley itself, a microcosm, a smaller version of it, northwest to southeast, down to the southeast tip of the valley. What's down at the southeast tip of the valley? Look. Starting right here, tens of thousands of more oil wells that make the other operation look small. Quite literally ants on the ground. Well, I mean, they look like ants on the ground. And that's just one big patch here. Goes over here. And down across the town. Right through town. Through the farm fields and the desert. And carries on. Down here. Through the farm fields. Whatever they're farming. This isn't for pumping water, guys. And we carry on down to the southeast tip of the valley, all the way down here where there's a bunch more. And are you shocked to find out that the earthquakes come down the San Andreas, jump over to the drill points where they start, and then go down at an angle, northwest to southeast, and strike where their drill points are down here to the south? Now, California-Nevada borders doing the same thing, but these are all volcanoes instead of drill points. Oh, and one other thing I didn't show you. This, these, the big stack up here in Northern California. Why wouldn't I show it to you? Well, it's just so, I've looked it up 10,000 times in the past eight years. The geysers of California. That's where the stack is on the north side. It's a volcano. It's called Clear Lake Volcano. Very impressive looking. There we go. There's Clear Lake Volcano. Mount Kanakti in the inside of it. But on the side, sorry guys, sorry guys, we got a little cat scoo screwing around in here now. What's he moving? He's moving something, sliding something. All right, we're on the side of the volcano here, and it's pretty obvious we have drill points. But this is not for oil or gas. These are geothermal drill points for steam. So the big stack there is a steam operation that's been drilled into a volcano then we go in a diagonal line down along the coast down to our drill points down at the oil the volcanoes do i need to show them to you well i guess i do there's always going to be some new people here who don't know about the volcanoes in northern california and along the california nevada border but it's the same principle as the drill points mother nature has punched in on the underside of the plate so what i'm showing you here is that there's a path of quakes and that they're related to each other and that that path of quakes, I believe, is caused by a standing wave. And we get the same size quakes dropped off across the wave tank and then all we have to determine then is what's the wave tank and how big are the waves that are coming across currently. And that's where we are at the California-Nevada border. I'm going to prove to you, starting in northern, here, we are at Lake Almanor. But Lake Almanor is at the foot of Mount Lassen. Mount Lassen erupted about 110 years ago, 120 years ago, in the late 1800s. And there it is, stratovolcano. And look at the volcanic field around it. Look how many there are. I'll just zoom in on one rando volcano here at Cinder Cone Butte State Park. And look at the lava flow, man. Oh, dude, could you imagine rowing along through here? It's like a 200-foot high non-tree covered lava flow where it's young enough that there's only a few trees in there. I wonder what kind of tree that is. Ha! Ah! Now they're going to find the damn hippies up in there. You wouldn't believe the stuff that I found looking up around here, guys. Anyway. So, <laughs> at the volcano, again, that's right where we are. We're on the side of it, in the middle of the lake at Lake Almanor. Now, over to the east, we have a 1.8 at a place called Pyramid Lake. It's listed as Sutcliffe, Nevada. But there's something else here. Lava Beds State Park and the lava deposits 
on the west side of Pyramid Lake. Now, why would there even be lava deposits at all over here? I, they're not marked. I don't have them place marked. But right here are the needles at Pyramid Lake. These are geothermal deposits, fumaroles, geysers, and tufa deposits, which is like a limestone calcium buildup that ha comes out with the hot water and builds up over time. And there it is. So we're right on the side of it. No doubt about it. 100% we are right there. What's over here? Oh. Oh, shit. Crying out loud, man. Guys, look. I'm not trying to cause any problems at all. But when we're at the Sierra Nevada Army Storage Depot, where they're storing bunkers full of material, haven't we already heard that in this update before somewhere else? Check out the coordinates. 119799. Flip it upside down. All right, okay. Upside down and backwards, I see another 666. I don't know. That's a little weird. So, wait. What's all this? Oh, the railroad. Well, you got to have the railroad to go down and go down to the... Uh, it's just like at the other one. Just like at the other one, guys. I, I, well, what are the chances? That's where that one is. I didn't know. I got to go look them up. This is how I get in trouble. So, let's let's move on, shall we? Let's just move on down to the California-Nevada border. Let's get the hell out of here. There's a triangle of quakes going from the California-Nevada border down here to a super volcano that we know of called Long Valley Caldera. And then going across over to here to a place called Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes on the backside of our arrow. And you'll notice the line of quakes is making a point, pointing to the backside of the arrow. Now this spot over here at Monte Cristo and this spot down here at the super volcano, I can show you easily. Up here on the north side, we're going to have to look across pretty much the whole border region. So let's get on it. Here we are. Here is the known super volcano at the California-Nevada border, Long Valley Caldera. 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt down below, classifying it as a supervolcano. It's lined with other volcanoes, smaller but still significant, Mammoth Mountain and so forth. Okay, that is this cluster here on the south side. Make sure you can see all this. Now, over here on the east side is Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes and this east to west facing line of quakes. Let me show you. Right here. Monte Cristo Hills with a line of quakes going across it, west and east. Why does that matter? You got to remember what happened a year and a half, almost two years ago here. A 6.5 earthquake struck here, almost near 7, and a surface fissure fracture formed. A crack in the ground. And 13 miles long to start, and it went east to west. And it went over towards these, Coaldale Volcanic Butte and what's on the side of Coaldale. These old, let me see if I can even find them, old open pit mines. But anyway, uh, we don't need to get into that now. We went over there with quakes, drew our eye to it. Now there's a line of quakes again going west and east. It points back over to the center of the border right there between all three. If these are three triangulation points, right? what's right in the middle? Let's go show you. Right here. We got the quakes coming in right between Mono Lake, which you'd think it would be pronounced Mono Lake, but uh, apparently I was mispronouncing it for the last 10 years, and Mud Springs Volcanic Butte and Aurora Bodhi Crater. Here's Aurora Bodhi. Pause it, read it if you need to, the Smithsonian. It's just a short description. Here's the lava flow from Mud Springs. This thing's like 300 feet high. You know what? We can get a side. I think we can get a side profile. Yeah. 300 feet high. Think of the lava flow over at La Palma. 50 feet high or so. This one's 300. That means it was a very viscous, thick magma that came out and it piled up on itself and only flowed a couple miles, but it piled up on itself. Hence, 300 feet high. But the quakes, pretty obvious, right there, going right across it, over here to Monte Cristo. And then the only spot I have not looked back up is up here on the northwest side, 
Let's show you. Right about here. Colville Topaz Lake. Now, I have not inspected the area too much. So there could be, oh, the name Leviathan Peak. Oh, wow. Ah, yeah. Nothing to see there. What's up? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a question. This is, this is for all my mystic viewers out there. What's up with the 666 and Leviathan references in this update? I'm not planning it that way. It's just weird. And, and, and that is weird, isn't it? Gee, is there anything else here? Let's go take a look. Okay, just a reservoir. Nothing of any significance that I can see. Do they have a power generation station or anything here? No, it's just a reservoir. I'm probably missing something. Likely I am. That's the only spot where I don't have any info. But the other locations are all volcanic, going right back up to it. Something did happen here, though. A 6.5 earthquake struck there, too, no more than three months ago. So, let's recap. 6.5 earthquake struck here. Can't find anything else there nearby. Need to do some more research on the location. Over to the east, 6 point something, 6.5, struck at Monte Cristo Hills last year. Down here on the south side, super volcano. And in between the two, volcanic field Mono Lake going over to Mud Springs. So let's recap for everybody now because this is like a mind-bending, mind-numbing update. Yellowstone swarming. Line of quakes going across it. Edge of the craton. Coming in from the northwest, Yellowstone's magma chamber also swarming here down below it. Going down across California, Nevada's border, volcanoes hit from Mount Lassen over to the U.S. military bunker storage location. Back down here to the super volcano, Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes and Mono Lake. Another line of quakes starting at a volcano here. Big stack, Clear Lake Volcano. Going across the Hayward Fault, down the San Andreas, and dead ending into drill points. Over at Colinga in Avenal, California. Then making a diagonal line down to the other drill points down at the southeast tip of the valley. I did not cover the quakes up here in Washington. <laughs> Should I? Ah, yes. Gotta look up the quakes up in Washington, too. What's 31 kilometers north-northeast of Amboy, Washington, anyone? Ah, UPS is here. Got UPS dropping off some boxes. Different guy. Somebody dropped their vape pen in my driveway. I live in a private subdivision. Wonder if it was the FedEx guy or... <laughs> Who's vaping? Ah, tobacco vapes, guys. Tobacco vapes. It's a jewel. Okay. Uh, here. St. Helens. We're on the side of my... Hey, speaking of vaping... <laughs> Speaking of vaping, we have some steam coming out of Mount St. Helens. All right, now on the side of Mount St. Helens, we've got an earthquake. And that's where the 0 0.5 is. Now, another same-sized quake struck 23 kilometers east by northeast of Ashford, Washington. Anybody know what's up there? I know. My viewers, long time, you should know too. We're going from Mount St. Helens to the top or the side of the crater of Mount Rainier. Well, really, I want you to think of this as below it. This earthquake is down inside of Mount Rainier. So hold up. Little stack of quakes at Mount Rainier. Another little stack of quakes, or another little set of quakes, down at Mount St. Helens. Any others? Well, we have to go back a few days before that to get any other earthquakes, and I'm only looking at 48 hours. So in 48 hours' time, this is pretty much it. There's one set that we need to look up still. 1.4, 1.3. Which one should we look up first? Oh, oh, wait. Yeah. South Cleelum. Clay El El Elium. Hey, I drove through this little town taking radiation readings in 2011. I did. Hold on. You want to see it? I don't even know if it's going to come up. YouTube blocks this kind of stuff when it has to do with radiation. Spell my name Dutch since with a C. Clay Elum. And there we are, 43.5 CPM. Is it going to play? Ah, look at my old intro, blowing up the Illuminati pyramid. Much love, guys. Pyramid gets destroyed by a falling heart. <laughs> there it is. 
Clay Loom Farmhouse Supply. We got a coffee there. I plot my radiation. Pioneer Coffee Company. Really good stuff there, guys. Anyway, plop the Geiger counter. And people, people walking by looking at me. One guy walks up. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like testing for radiation coming from Japan. He's like, oh, I heard about that. Doesn't the government do that? You work for the government? I'm like, no. No, don't work for the government. You would expect them to be doing this, but they turned off the radiation monitoring stations. They look at me like, what? I'm like, yeah, they turned them off. That's why I bought the Geiger counters and drove across the country taking readings. He's like, what are you finding? I'm like, well, I'm finding that it looks like it didn't happen. Somebody's psyching someone out because it sure looks like it didn't happen. All the readings are low. Anyway, oh, hey, look, hey, another explosion. And look at the coordinates. Man, I'm telling you, 46.166. Something's going on, man. Something's going on. It's freaky deaky. Somebody cue up the Twilight Zone music at this point, man. What's going on, dude? Is this some sort of special high holiday for the freak jobs or something? Freak job high holiday. 666 in Leviathan. Okay, whatever floats your boat, guys. I'm not here to judge you. Okay. Where are we? Wait. Harvest Heights Assembly of God. Hey, what are the... It's not like churches come up all the time when I look up an area. You guys, when was the last time you call a church popping up? Harvest Heights. Wonderful. Look, Horse Heaven Hills Properties. What's what? Okay, I'm out of here, man. We're out of here. Oh, wait. We can't leave. We can't leave. Dude, look where we are. Hold on, guys. This is serious now. I'm not joking. I was joking around, but... Okay, we're at the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility. The one I was talking about earlier in reference to the military. Here, the Hanford site. The old reactors. Look at that reactor wall, by the way. Look at that. Look at all the rods. My God. All right, this is where they used to have a bunch of experimental reactors. So here's the Manhattan Project National Historic Site. They broke these down, left the caskets, took all the nuclear material and keep it in storage here. Now remember what I've told you this whole update about electron cascade and buildup of nuclear materials having the same effect that a power line or that Mother Nature can have. Now look at this. This is the LIGO Gravity Wave Sensing Station, the Hanford Observatory. These are long lasers in a reflective housing that bounce back and it's a very fine laser. Detects small vibrations caused by electrical disturbances. Gravity waves, as they call them, coming across the universe. And they have this thing pointed at a right angle at all the heaviest elements known to man stored in caskets here. And we get an earthquake. Now look, man, if it was just one spot, I would say it was just chance. But this is like the fourth or fifth spot in my update today. Dude. All right, let's go down here. Let's wrap it all up. Southern California. Let's go and take a look. Where did the quake strike? Well, I do see that there's another diagonal line of quakes. And it's going northwest to southeast, just like all the others. Where does it start? It starts at a place called Cozo Junction, Olancha, California. This is Cozo Volcanic Field. Pictures speak a thousand words. Let me show you. I'm from the show-me state of Missouri. Oh, wait. Wrong coordinates. Copy and paste. There we are. Olancha, California. There's something here, just like all the other locations. It's not just some random spot. This is a volcanic field called Kozo Volcanic Field that humans have drilled into a bunch of times to get steam again. Here's our geothermal turbines, our pipelines. They go out to drill points. The drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet into this volcanic field. Here's our rising obsidian domes from bulging magma down below. Lacoliths. A lacolith is just a bulge in the plate from magma. We're on the side of there. Now here's the quake epicenter. Do you see these? There's a crescent shape of volcanoes here going from Golden Trout Creek Volcano which is a spatter cinder cone. Think of like over in La Palma. And here's an older one right next to it. 
Two of the same size and shape. One's older. Red Hill is older. Over here, Templeton Mountain. Oh, one second. Templeton Mountain here and Monash Mountain here. They're two of the same size and shape volcanoes as well. So one, two, three, four, and then the oddball out is Brown Mountain. It kind of looks a little different. It's making a crescent shape like this. Now across, we have Soda Butte. It's an old weathered volcano from a long time ago. So wait a second. I'm seeing a crescent going into oval shape now. And I pointed this out to my viewers in the past. This, for certain, is making the shape of a caldera. Big one. And then the only thing missing is down around this part, right? Well, one of my viewers pointed this out to me. I didn't even notice it. It's a bulging lacolith. Circular shape in the feature in the feature of the plate, but you have to back it out real far to see it. It's big. So we got a line of volcanoes going all the way around in a lacolith. Going through here, USGS has nothing marked. I propose to you this is a fault going right through the center of this caldera. Now look at the size of this caldera, potential caldera. And look at the size of the confirmed caldera up here on the north side, Long Valley. So Long Valley is the confirmed one, right? And the one that I think is one is here. So it's a super volcano, I think. There's fires right next to it breaking out at Camp Nelson again for like the 20th time in the past five years. Not 20, that's over-exaggeration. For the several times in the past several years this has happened right next to this thing. As seismic comes into it, I propose to you that the fires are being caused by that. The seismic, the intrusion of magma. Now... Line of quakes goes down. It starts here at Kozo, and look where it goes past. This line of quakes here, the diagonal line, it goes down past all these lava flows. Now, this really does look like over at La Palma, where you've got this line after line of cone after cone going all the way down and across, and that's where our line of quakes goes. Finally, Southern California. Another diagonal line of quakes going northwest to southeast, but it's spread across the whole L.A. Valley. So we're really going across the Elsinore Fault, the San Jacinto Fault, and the San Andreas. Elsinore is closest to the ocean. Then the San Jacinto is halfway between the lake and the San Andreas. And by the way, it's not a lake, it's a sea, salt and sea. Now, we could take the time to look up the rest of these quakes if we need to. But I don't think we really need to look up all of the quakes. We're going to go over to Topanga, California. Topanga Canyon. Oh, man. A bunch of hippies' ears just perked up. Okay. Yeah, no, we're not talking about that, guys. Yeah, put put down your bong. <laughs> don't get excited, Okay, take off your Birkenstocks, guys. This is classes in session. So here we are. We're at Topanga. But this is really along the faults that go connect down to the oil pumping operations of North LA. And these, all these, oil and gas again. And we see quakes that start up here, and they'll make their way down into Inglewood. So we're going to watch for that. We're going to watch for this to progress following the fault down to the drill points. That's where we start with the 1.5. 1.9 down along the coast. This gets us down into LA. Let me show you. Right down here, off the coast of Long Beach. Now, do I need to tell you what's down here? I don't know, somebody's at our front door. Ah, wifey at the front door. You need help? Oh, you're all good. Well, we're live. Hey, Bill O'Reilly. No, nah, the damn thing sucks. We're going to do this right here. They're going live. I'm going to throw my pen. Okay, where were we? Oh, yeah. You know what's right down here, guys? A giant port. But not just anything at this giant port. We got a huge amount of electrical generation also going on here. So if you guys don't know about the electrical generation going on, providing power, we also have... A bunker facility. <laughs> Again, I, I, you can't make this stuff up. So how many bunkers am I going to show you in this update? I don't know. Looks like we got a bunker problem. 
Uh, somebody contact the conspiracy theorist on YouTube. Okay, so now, final little update on this. We're looking for a push to come in from the Northwest. I'm looking for a significant increase to come in from the Northwest very soon. So why am I looking for an increase to come in? Well, Alaska just got a six. We're whole plate. Uh, there it is again. Plate is moving again all the way across, and it's moving on all sides in a 6.0 range. That means a new six is due off the coast of the United States. New six. Once a six strikes off the coast of the United States, things will increase, not by that six, but by the wave that caused it. So this wave, when it comes in, it's already up in Alaska, dropping off sixes all the way around the Pacific. It's due to come into the U.S. Should also be a six off our coast. It's been a minute since we've had any six activity out here. Might even be hiding the earthquakes out there. But anyway, six is going to come rolling in here off the coast very soon. The whole plate has already been displaced. So, I mean, you don't need me to show it to you. There it is. There's the earthquakes in 48 hours. All of North America has already been displaced, meaning something's displaced in North America. And you can trace it all back to the northwest to up here. Let me show you. Right up into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. And that's where we don't have any earthquakes reported. It might be because they're not reporting quakes out there. But either way, we're going to get a six out there. And whether they report it or not kind of doesn't matter even. Because when it does strike, and it will strike, we will see a huge increase go down into California. That I'll be talking about massive stacks of quakes in the next few days here. This will look like low. Each one of these stacks will go way up off the screen. Okay? Hasn't happened yet. That's what's going to happen. Where is the earthquake going to strike out in the ocean? I would look directly on the coast of Oregon, going into Northern California. Now, again, don't rule out as far north as Vancouver Island. I mean, they would be, chances are, down to the south, on the south side of the Juan de Fuca. Let me show it to you on the USGS map. Down here, that we would see a six break out here off the coast of Eureka, followed shortly thereafter by a big flow increase into California, and then a big flow increase going across the rest of the plate. I mean, a six on the West Coast equals like a five in the Midwest, equals like a four over on the East Coast. And that's what should happen. If it's six strikes on the West Coast, we should see big increase over here at Oklahoma and Texas, and then we should see, a, and Kansas, and then we should see the East Coast get hit between our current sets of quakes, between Maine and Virginia. Who's between Maine and Virginia? Dude. Joyzy! New Jersey! Ah, New Jersey. Oh, well. Eh, get ready for it. 4.0 range quake. They'll probably try to call it a sonic boom or blame it on Bubba shooting Tannerite out in the backwoods or something. And on that note, let's go back to where we started this whole update, which is in the West Pacific. Oh, oh, Hawaii. Hawaii. Forgot to do Hawaii. Man, big island. Aloha. Check it out, guys. Kilauea is swarming. We're really moving at Kilauea. This is the past two days worth of quakes. All the way around the Middle East Rift Zone. Middle Rift Zone. And it goes from Mauna Loa down to Pahala. Back up to Kilauea. And then the rare oddity has spread with a 4.0 earthquake back up the Hawaiian Island chain. Back behind it, if you will. But this is just letting us know something's coming in. I'll show you in a second where this is all coming from. Kolina. Hawaii. Man, oh, dude, I'm ready to come. I'm going to be out there, and I'm not leaving. We're taking over. Me and my viewers, all 500,000 of us are all going to pile on to, I don't know, 20 cruise ships, and we're going to come out there, and we're going to take over. I hope you're ready. Okay, we're going to call it Dutchistan. We're going to take one of the, we're going to take one of the islands, we're going to call it Dutchistan. Now, Now, really, when I see this, I see a bunch of ancient volcanic fields that I haven't had to talk about in the entire time I've been online. Kulau. Extensively eroded, elongated Kulau basaltic shield volcano of Pliocene to Pleistocene age forms much of the eastern half of Oahu Island. That's what we're right next to. Oh, I said I was going to show you where, how this all ties together. Look at the Hawaiian island chain, and it goes back up to the northwest. It connects in and goes and makes a steep bend north and connects like an arrow into Kamchatka. So, a flow comes out of Kamchatka 
It goes down, across, over, and hits into Hawaii. Once it hits in Hawaii, it follows the fracture zones over to the east and goes over to Gulf of California. The flow comes down, goes over, and across. Happens a lot. Happens only when a big push is coming across, though. And the 4 struck first. This 3.9 struck first. Then a new swarm broke out down here at the tail end, down at the magma chamber. And let me show it to you. Think of La Palma. And it's kind of the same principle applies. We'll look at a side view of Hawaii here. There we are. So energy is coming in from up all the way up at Kamchatka, and it's coming down the Hawaiian island chain. We drop off a four right up here next to Oahu, and then boom, hit in here to the south part of the island, Kilauea's magma chamber. And Kilauea is at the foot of Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is bigger. Kilauea is at the foot of it, and then going down to the coast. Now, the magma chamber is down below here, of course, and it drained out a few years ago completely. Drained out, down, 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 and float out the side over here. And the magma chamber, when it drained out, became smaller. It collapsed, and the top caved in. So the top part of the magma chamber became smaller. Then, the feeder for it started to recharge it over the course of, like, a year. It started to refill it. And it did. It refilled completely. And it got to the point where it was completely full, and it started to get earthquakes all around the outside edge of it because it was smaller. And the feeder for it from down below is still the same size. It's trying to pump the same amount of magma into a smaller chamber. And there started to be a bunch of earthquakes around the outside edge of the middle rift zone here. Then, boom! Out the center of it, it blew. And it blew out. And that's where we are now. So, new push coming in now indicates new seismic coming in. This wave that I've been talking about the whole update. This wave is coming in and hammering into the magma chamber. And it's swarming out. We're going to go up into the four. Actually, I'm sorry. We're going to go up into the five range. Five range. It's going to get everybody's attention in Hawaii this week. It should. Five-ish? I don't think it means eruption or anything like that. It's just a new push coming in from Kamchatka. And it's, come on. The rest of the planet's displacing. You can see it. We go the opposite direction. We go all the way back over to La Palma. And that's where the flow is going out all the way on the opposite side. So while it's going to Hawaii, and let me show it to you this way, it's coming up, over, down, and over to Hawaii this way. And the flow is going over and around, out and across, <laughs> and down to Canaries this way. And let's look at the side of La Palma. It's kind of like Hawaii, guys. It really is. Let me show you. I mean, it's completely different than Hawaii, but just the, the look of it. So here's our big caldera. And over here on the side is the spot that's erupting. And it's the northern spot up here somewhere. One of these is the spot that's erupting. And the flow is coming down this way. Okay, so we're on the north side. This is erupting here with the vents at La Cumbra Vieja. Now, the magma chamber for this is down below it, of course, just like in Hawaii. And it's deflating. Bushcraft Bear are talking about cracks forming in the ground down here as this is deflating. Lots of lava coming out, flowing down the hillsides, but when it's being pushed up out, down below it, it recharges with new magma. Now, the recharge is pushed in from even deeper, and I don't really know what even causes that recharge from deeper, but I do know that the wave that's traveling through causes earthquakes. And when there's a big increase in the earthquake activity, we tend to see an increase in the volcanic activity. So, getting back to the view here, this is collapsing. There's cracking forming in the ground as this is collapsing. Now, is it going to refill? Yes, it will refill. But it's going to collapse first. And it will be a smaller top of the magma chamber, however big it is, and it'll recharge sometime in the next weeks, months, years. Took Hawaii 1.5 years, one and a half years to recharge. And when it recharges, you'll see a bunch of quakes going around the outside of it as it's full or starting to refill and reach its capacity. Once it gets full, and if there's a new push that comes in, it can blow and create a new crater. Like in Hawaii or any one of these craters. Craters different than cones. 
Uh, like, for instance, a blast caldera, a crater, as opposed to a spatter cone. Okay, that could happen. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm just saying that in Hawaii, when it recharged, a new push came in, and the magma chamber was smaller, and it caused a blast of the crater. All right, and the new push that we're seeing now is on the six-ish level. So there's a fair amount of energy getting ready to come into the region, and I would look for that to possibly have an increase. Volcanically speaking, with eruption back at La Palma, which is somewhat going quiet, from what I understand. Now, I don't know if it's completely quiet. You know what? We can go back and search. Let's do that. Uh, da, 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 da. La Palma live. Well, actually, let's just search La Palma, and then we will filter it live and see if we've got a live view. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon here. Looks like they're back to it, guys. Global News is on top of it now. Reuters also looks like they've got it. This is the live view, and it's still a-going. Now, last night, when this thing broke apart, you guys got to go source those videos. Man, I'll tell you what, it was insane. You got to go see it, though. Uh, some other people probably have compiled that into something that's worth watching. I will save this as a video, and we will put it up over on YouTube. I don't really consider this a forecast. It's more of an update as to where we are. I will be getting a full planetary forecast out for all the regions in the next day. So within the next 24 hours, I will have put together a forecast for every region on the planet, but first, we got to get up to speed on what's hitting. And that's the full hour update that we just did now. A forecast is going to take another hour. And on that note, guys, word up and much love. Be safe. I want you to remember this. Don't be scared. You need to be prepared. You need to have an earthquake plan. You need to know what to do when a disaster strikes. You need to have an emergency kit. I'm not trying to harp on you or be a know-it-all or anything. Just... Please take the time to develop an emergency preparation plan and kit. You should already have most of the stuff that you need. A change of clothes, set of shoes, battery, flashlight. Come on, you're supposed to have first aid kit and sanitation. God, if you don't have sanitation met after this past year, I don't know what to tell you. You should have a lot of extra crap. A lot of extra cleaning supplies you didn't have to use. So... Those kind of things, well, those cleaning supplies you could skip on, but I'm talking about first aid and sanitation. You can have that in your emergency kit. Also, think about maybe extra identification, extra debit cards, those kind of things. Food and water, that's going to get you through a couple days. Water is heavy, seven pounds a gallon or more, or around seven pounds a gallon. So maybe one gallon of water or little bottles of water. You will come up with a good solution. I'm just getting you going on doing it. Stop procrastinating. And don't go around and brag about it either. Don't go and be like, I'm doing my bug out bag. Beat your chest. I'm doing my emergency kit. You should do it too. No, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. And you don't do that in your life. You just do it for yourself. You know, if your friends and family see that you have one, they'll just be like, what's that? And you'll be like, oh, it's my emergency kit. It's got everything in it in case I, extra keys and everything. They'll be like, oh man, I need one of those. And you just tell them to do it. 8.3 pounds a gallon. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. There, thank you. Uh, science. All right. Oh, New Zealanders are asking for an update. I didn't cover New Zealand. Ah, oh, of course, the one spot I forgot. No offense, guys. So on your north side, you got a bunch of deep quakes. You've got a spread of threes going up to four, going down across the Cook Strait. So deep quakes to the north, going down to Cook Strait, south of the island. And, or south of the North Island. Now, I would watch where the rings overlap. North Island. We call this the catcher's mitt position. It looks like a catcher's mitt. But look where the rings overlap. That's the halfway point between the current quakes. And the halfway point thing comes into play because we're talking about the waves. One wave's peak goes into the next wave's valley. The halfway point. And the valley is filled in by the peak. Watch. Perfectly. In the standing wave. And so the halfway point's going to get filled in by something larger than what's on both sides. And we got fours and a deep five on one side and fours on the other. I'd say it's going to go up to the 
upper 5 to low 6 range. Upper 5, low 6, North Island of New Zealand, right at the catcher's mitt position, Bay of Plenty, thumb of the catcher's mitt, east of White Island, on the plate boundary. That's where I'll watch. Okay? I'm going to get a forecast, like I said, up in the next day. That'll cover everything. I hope this just explains what's currently going on for you guys. Hope, hope you understand. There's a transfer that's going on around the planet. Professionals said there was no transfer, nothing was related, and accused me of faking the quakes. Man, they, they sealed my deal in uh, science fame forever by accusing me of faking the quakes. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting here. I, I, I'm a man of million, many talents. I, I'm typing away. It's like a neo-hacker situation here. I can just do about everything. Okay, anyway. You know, when you can do just about everything, you're actually not good at anything. <laughs> I do everything somewhat good. Well, doesn't that mean you do everything somewhat bad, too? <laughs> ah, logic. Mr. Spock says, too much Kirk. I'm, I've got too much Kirk going on right now. I need more Mr. Spock in my life. Less Kirk. More Spock, less Kirk. The whole world would be better if we had more Spock and less Kirk. And on that note, look out for this over on YouTube. YouTube.